Okay, so I bought a laser from China. Um, it's much smaller than, or much lighter than I had anticipated. Um, I've had it for four days, but I really haven't done anything with it, haven't had the time. So, um, one of the reasons I'm doing this video is that uh, when I was doing research on it, there were a few videos out there, but but uh, I wanted something maybe uh, that, uh, that told me a little bit more about what I was getting. So, uh, again, this will be... Uh, my ex first experience with a China laser, and uh, hopefully you'll learn through my mistakes or success. Um, a little bit about me, um, I actually have ran a laser for over five years, one of the United States ones that cost, you know, 13 to 25 grand. And so I'm just interested to see, interested to see what a sub $1,000 laser uh, from China will do. Um, uh, the, the unit came with uh, two packages. Uh, the peripherals, which I'm showing you now, and uh, and the laser. The laser was pre-installed on the tube. So let me show you what, what I got in the peripherals box. Uh, an accessories case. I actually asked for newly draw. Newly draw is what I'm hoping will be the best for this unit because it does raster cutting and vector cutting. I told them five times just to make sure that I got newly draw. And they sent me both. Uh, th this one says newly draw version 2, but that's actually newly seal. I got lucky. I got two dongles. Um, accessories for the pump. The actual pump. A cord which I will not use because that looks like it's for 220. A parallel port. A power supply for the pump. And luckily I have a computer around and I will be using that cord also. Now, the vent fan and the pipe. All right, that's mainly it. We're going to go through the installation of the software too. One thing, I do not have a ground in my house, so I had to run one. It's another reason why I haven't hooked it up. Um, anyway, well, let's uh, let's go forward from here, and I'll, I'll uh, show you what I've done, which isn't very much. All right, thanks. Okay, so here she is. Now, the first thing that I pretty much did is I looked into the internals in here. I, I made sure that all these connections were tight. They seem to be good. Uh, the boards also seem to be in good condition. Um, I apologize for the shakiness of the camera here. I'm pulling it off the tripod so that you can kind of have a look inside what it looks like. Everything seemed to be secure, which, are, which, were, which is what I was really happy with. Okay, those are the first things I looked at. And then I, uh, I looked inside the, the cabinet. Um, so I'll go ahead and remount the tripod and uh, we'll look in there. Okay, so I noticed one thing. There is no screw holding this down. It would be nice. Um, I might apply some kind of latch there as an extra modification. Okay, I opened the lid. Uh, when I did first get it, like I said, I haven't done anything much. There was a ribbon holding this down. So it wouldn't move, and a ribbon holding this down, so it wouldn't move. Um, so I un, I cut those. Kind of felt, felt pretty good. I will mention that you probably want a screw handy. This is where you will adjust the laser that will, that will make sure that the angle is correct from the mirrors in back. There's a mirror back here, a mirror here, a mirror here, and then a lens at the bottom. Okay, once it starts, you'll also notice this is spring-loaded. You put your item in here to clamp it. My plan is to actually take the whole bed out to give myself a larger engraving area. And this is uh, for the vent. I plan on cutting that off and modifying that a bit too on, on the uh, US lasers that I've used. This has actually been below the table, so we'll see how that works. Um, other than that, everything looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and close that, and we're going to look at the back of it. Okay, so here is the back of the laser. This is for your ground, if you need it. If you're pre-wired with the ground, through, through here, you'll be fine. I had to run a separate, uh, separate line for mine. Um, sorry, I got a little bit of a cold. Um, your fuse, your fan to cool the electronics. Your in and out. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, water inlet, water outlet. So we'll be plugging the uh, pump into here, if it even works. There was a screw back here. I took that off. 
as you can see, I still really haven't done much. Everything else is kind of clamped down. We're going to take these out. I was happy to see that my uh, laser tubes seem to be in relatively good condition. I didn't see any cracks, but we really won't know, I guess, until we start putting water through it. You can see a back mirror through here. And there, it's hard to see, but there's a little extra wire clamp back here. I don't know what it's for yet. But I don't know if I should keep this in or not. But I'm going to take it out. I like saving parts, so I will be saving these. All right, well, that's the back of it. I'm going to go ahead and um, screw in my ground. And uh, I'm going to have to turn this around again. I'm going to go get a bucket of water. Um, the intro video that it came with wasn't that great. It was okay. Um, I've watched it. It did say that the water had to be at 35 degrees. It didn't say whether it's Fahrenheit or Celsius. Um, I'm going to err on the side of caution and make the water almost freezing. So I don't have a chiller yet, so I got a bag of ice. We're going to try that. Okay, so I thought I'd probably talk about a few accessories that are handy to have on hand. Okay, first off you got your NAPTA. And NAPTA is typically used on lasers for cleaning the belts. Uh, that's about it. Then you have your acetone. Your acetone is actually meant to clean your lenses. Uh, tape that's used to align the lenses. And of course uh, q-tips that's used to clean the lenses if you can get uh, the ones without uh, a lot of cotton or actually the, the ones that, that are used to apply makeup are great because they don't leave any strands but still for right now this will work so those are some good accessories to have um, that's generally what you use on the US lasers I'm assuming it's very similar here I've looked at the lenses and they look just about the same um, you don't have to do it that often but it will extend the life of your laser all right, uh, again, I should mention that I'm not affiliated with uh, any laser company at all, so everything I show you here is my experiences, and uh, you should do uh, anything what you do at your, extra, ex, uh, your own uh, discretion. I will be modifying stuff eventually, and uh, I'm not responsible for any mistakes you might make, or I'm only responsible for the mistakes that I make. All right, so let's... Uh, going to go back over to the lens, the laser here, and uh, we'll take a look at the lenses and make sure that they look clean. Okay, so just a few things. Um, this is where the actual lens is. And be very careful so it doesn't drop or crack. Okay, I'm looking at that lens, looking for, I'm looking at the lens, looking for any dust on it. Um, this actually looks pretty good. And, uh, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, I'll try and get a closer view so you can take a look. Okay, there's your lens. It's actually a little bit dirty, you can see. But as, as long as the laser is actually hitting the center and that's what's clean, you'll be good. Uh, so I'm going to put that back in and uh, check the other lenses.